Hi, it's Saturday, July 6th. This is an update on Tropical Storm Barrel in the Gulf of Mexico. Apologies for the audio quality today. I'm being forced to use the built-in laptop microphone as I'm traveling, so apologies for that. But continuing to watch, Barrel now emerged over the Gulf after moving over the Yucatan Peninsula yesterday. It emerged off the northwestern coast of the peninsula about 15 hours ago, just a little bit farther north than most models expected, and has moved roughly west-northwest or northwestward since that time, and has just now started to redevelop thunderstorm activity and start the process of rebuilding an inner core. This was a fully exposed circulation for most of the last 12 hours, and that's thanks to what we talked about yesterday. There is a little bit of southerly shear remaining over the storm and some dry air wrapping around the southern and now the eastern side and eventually the northern side of the circulation. This is the water vapor satellite loop illustrating that you'll see this region of especially dark gray or black right in here and that is getting forced into the southern side of the circulation by this old upper level low which is weakening but is still present to the west of barrel forcing a little bit of southerly wind shear about 15 knots or so and since the system was weakened after passing over the land mass it was vulnerable to that shear and this dry air is getting pushed in and the inner core did disintegrate overnight last night. It's just now beginning the process of trying to rebuild. It's over warmer water now. Some of this water north of the Yucatan is a bit cooler. Now the circulation is out over warm water. It's beginning to pick up new moisture off of the ocean and develop renewed thunderstorm activity near its center. This is the reconnaissance aircraft data from the Air Force plane currently flying in the storm. They are finally seeing a little bit of a lowering of the central pressure. It's been about constant over the last 15 hours since the system crossed the coast and moved back over water, but we might now be starting to see a little bit of gradual re-strengthening begin as these thunderstorms begin to develop and wrap around the western side of the system. Winds not particularly impressive here. These winds are being measured at about 10,000 feet by the aircraft. Surface max winds are in the 50 to 60 mile per hour range. The official intensity from the National Hurricane Center is a 60 mile per hour tropical storm. And what we're going to be watching today is for the development of a renewed, compact, and contracting radius of maximum wind. Right now, it's fairly ill-defined. The maximum on the northeast quadrant might be way out here. Southeast quadrant, it's out here. A little tighter in the northwest quadrant due to these thunderstorms developing. Uh, but in order to see significant re-strengthening of barrel towards hurricane status again, we will need to see a tight radius of maximum wind, more like this quadrant, but wrapped all the way around nice and tight, a couple dozen miles or less. And we'll be comparing the evolution of barrel structure against the expectation from computer modeling. This is the high resolution half speed hurricane model from NOAA, showing the asymmetry that we observed in satellite imagery with dry air on the south side, most of the convection and moisture on the north side due to that southerly shear being imposed on the vortex. And as we go forward in time today, during Saturday on this model, you eventually see central convection start developing and trying to wrap around the western side. And this is Saturday evening central time, but you'll notice that this is pretty similar to what we're already seeing Saturday morning central time with some of this convective burst already forming a half moon around the center of circulation. So it's possible barrel is front running that timing a little bit and getting started a little earlier. Similarly on the GFS, you actually have to wait an even longer time, 24 hours before you see a wrapped convective band along the western semicircle, and the pressure doesn't get below a thousand millibars until Sunday morning here. So barrel seems to be developing an inner core again, certainly faster than the GFS, maybe a little faster than the half speed as well. We'll see if that trend persists. It's probably going to take multiple rounds of this deep convection firing as this dry air gets wrapped around, it may even get into the north side before it's finally mixed out. So we may see a couple of bursts, bursting attempts, pulses at trying to form an inner core ring of convection again. But if barrel ends up a little ahead of schedule on that, that'll certainly be something to watch as the quicker it comes together, of course, likely the stronger it will be at the end. Now, even on these models that take a while, GFS takes a full day 
to start building this inner core, but even still, in the final 24 hours before landfall, it intensifies quite quickly into a 978 millibar hurricane. This would probably be category one kind of territory, but a solid hurricane coming into the coastline. And with halves B, similarly, you see multiple bursts here. The dry air kind of wraps around, but eventually gets mixed out, and you get a more symmetric moisture field and inner core that builds Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. And then by Monday morning, you do have a legitimate hurricane with a fully formed inner core and eye wall making landfall along the central Texas coastline. And that's essentially a consensus opinion among the modeling right now that conditions will favor reorganization and intensification of barrel on approach to the coastline. The wind shear that I mentioned earlier will be decreasing as this upper level low weakens further and backs away more. And so that southerly shear will disappear as barrel nears the coastline that will allow the dry air to eventually get mixed out, the vortex to symmetrize, become more symmetric, and perhaps strengthen a little more quickly on the final hours approaching the coastline. So we'll be watching for that very carefully during the day today and into tomorrow. And regarding track really quick, this is the European model 500 millibar chart showing barrel down here as of Saturday morning. And again, there's this upper level high. You can see the clockwise wind barbs here centered over northern Florida. And there's a weakness in this ridge over Texas due to the smiley face shaped broad long wave trough in the jet stream over the central U.S. And so barrel is moving towards this weakness. The final landfall point will of course depend on the little wobbles in the storm center, whether it get, gets tugged to and fro by some of these convective bursts developing on one side versus the other, could tug it around a little bit, and the, the net result of all that tugging could change some of the details of where it tracks. So modeling has varied a little bit, and you'll see that the European model, after shifting considerably to the north for the last 24 hours, we've had some variability. This run makes landfall on the western side of Matagorda Bay, and a couple of runs ago it was near Freeport, and so you can see there's been some variability in the landfall locations on the European model. Of course, we can't nail down the landfall location with perfect precision, so don't expect that. The general range of outcomes from the modeling now, it is starting to narrow, thankfully, uh, between about Corpus Christi and the central Texas coastline up to maybe as far east as Freeport is where most of the modeling currently sits with the storm, and the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center has shifted north as well and is into the western side of Matagorda Bay after being just north of Brownsville yesterday, 24 hours ago. So we have seen a shift, and yes, further shifts could occur here. We are starting to narrow the range of possibilities today. We're getting closer to the landfall time, but you can see that the hurricane watch area is fairly extensive from northern Mexico, Rio Grande, all the way up to the southwestern edge of Galveston Bay. So if you're in that pink region, expect the possibility of hurricane conditions going into Monday morning. And because of the angle of approach to the coastline, there's some extra sensitivity in terms of where the landfall will occur because the track roughly parallels the coastline. And a, a larger swath of coastline could experience the core of barrel just because it could scrape a portion of the coastline before finally moving inland due to its direction of motion. So just be aware of that. And of course, it won't just be about the winds in the core at landfall, but storm surge as well. You can see several feet of water level rise expected both to the left and the right of the track. You can, the landfall is about here, but you can see there's even water level rise on the back side. And keep in mind, it's not just onshore flow on the eastern side that causes the water level rise. It's also anyone that experiences onshore flow on the sides of these bays and the barrier islands. And remember, when the storm is down here, it's still going to be onshore flow. So before the storm moves inland, you might think it's all offshore flow at that point, but well before landfall, you'll be getting the onshore flow. So expect water level rises all throughout these areas of several feet above normally dry ground. And of course, maybe more depending on how strong barrel actually gets. The stronger it gets, the more water it will push. And if there will be the risk of inland flash flooding as well. The storm will be slowing up a little bit as it moves inland. So there will be a healthy corridor of several inches of rain, perhaps as high as 10 or more inches in localized areas. Of course, the details of rainfall are typically hard to predict, but this overall area should expect Pretty heavy rainfall and the potential for flash flood warnings to be coming out for vulnerable areas. Uh, so be prepared for that, even if you're not exposed to the 
winds in the core of Hurricane Barrel. So we'll keep an eye on the storm today. I expect a hurricane coming into the Texas coastline. Right now, the National Hurricane Center has a Category 1 storm with winds of about 80 miles an hour. Prepare for more than that just in case. If the storm comes together a little more quickly today, you know, you could easily see a hurricane with winds approaching or exceeding 100 miles an hour. So be prepared for a little bit more than is forecast. Always better safe than sorry. And be ready for wind, storm surge, and flash flooding impacts as this comes in to the southern or central Texas coastline. So be prepared all up and down this section where the hurricane watch is currently in place. I'll have another video tomorrow and for more frequent updates on how Barrel is developing today, I post on my X slash Twitter account fairly frequently at Tropical Tidbits. You can follow me there for more frequent scientific updates on the storm's progression during the course of the day. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.